Want to cut Azure VM costs by up to 90%? Spot VMs may be the secret weapon if you know how to use them. Hey everyone, I'm Travis. Today we're diving into Azure Spot VMs, what they are, how they work, and when they can save you some serious money or cause serious headaches if used incorrectly. If you find this video helpful, please hit like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Also, check out my courses at udemy.com, including a beginner's guide to the AZ900. Links are below. And a big thanks to my channel members for your support. So what is an Azure Spot VM? It's a regular VM, but sold at a discount because it runs on Azure's unused capacity. Think of it like leftover shelf space at a grocery store. It's not making any money. If Azure has excess capacity, they'd rather sell it at a discount than let it sit idle. But there's a catch. Spot VMs can be taken offline at any time. If demand spikes, Azure reclaims the space for full-priced workloads. There's no SLA and no guarantee of uptime for spot VMs. To illustrate that point, let's say a region is running at 70% capacity. Azure fills 20% with spot VMs, leaving 10% unused. If demand jumps to 90%, half those spot VMs get evicted. That's why they're cheap, because they can be taken offline at any time. So when should we use them? Only for workloads that can handle interruptions batch jobs, data crunching, dev test environments, definitely not for domain controllers or production database servers. Spot VM availability depends on the region and may fluctuate with data center location, size, time of day, or season. The discount we get for using Spot VMs also varies by region, VM size, and availability. The cost will not exceed the cost of the same size standard VM, however. The process of reclaiming capacity from spot VMs is called eviction. There are two eviction options to choose from. Deallocate stops the virtual machine from running. We no longer pay for compute resources, but storage costs will continue, and it will continue to count against the spot VM vCPU quota. Deallocate is useful when we want to preserve spot VMs for later use, even though the VM itself is not active. The other option is to delete the spot VM. If this is selected, the VM and its associated storage are permanently removed and the spot VM vCPU quota is freed up, making it a suitable choice for workloads using ephemeral disks or situations where quick performance and cleanup are a priority. Evictions for Azure spot VMs will occur for two reasons. We can configure evictions to only happen based on capacity. Azure will evict a spot VM when it needs the underlying resources for standard workloads. This means the VM will be removed if Azure requires more space to accommodate standard non-spot virtual machines. The other option is based on capacity or price. We can set the maximum price that we're willing to pay for a spot VM. The discount amount can change, and if the current spot VM cost goes above the price we set, or if there's insufficient capacity, the VM will be evicted. This helps control spending and manages resource availability. For example, if a standard VM costs 50 cents an hour and the spot pricing is 25 cents an hour, we could cap the price at 35 cents an hour. If the spot VM cost goes over 35 cents, Azure evicts the spot VM. There are a few things to keep in mind. We can't directly convert a spot VM to a standard VM or vice versa. We can't deploy a new spot VM or restart a deallocated spot VM if the current price exceeds the maximum price set for that VM, or if there's no capacity available for spot VMs. Also, each subscription has spot vCPU quotas set per region. Make sure there's enough spot vCPU quotas available in the deployment region. Let's jump into the portal and walk through setting up an Azure spot VM. Here we are in the Azure portal. We'll start with reviewing the spot virtual machine quota. A spot VM vCPU quota is different from a standard vCPU quota. We can get to that by going to the subscription and then usage and quotas under settings. From here, we'll set the filter to the region we're deploying the spot VM or spot VM scale set to. Central US for this example. And if we search for spot, that shows the total regional spot vCPUs for the region. Be sure to have sufficient spot VM quotas before deploying a spot VM. Otherwise, the deployment will fail. We can edit the quota from the edit button on the right or select the quota and go to new quota request at the top of the page. In some cases, we may need to submit a support request to get a quota increase. This will depend on the subscription type and the agreement with Microsoft. In my case, I had to submit a support ticket to get an increase from three to eight. 
Once we have the required quotas, we can create our new spot VM. To create our spot VM, we'll go to virtual machines and create a new VM. Most of the settings are the same as configuring a standard VM. Select the subscription and resource group, give the VM a name, select the region and the availability options. This example won't use any availability options. If availability was important, we wouldn't use a spot VM. Set the image. This example will use Windows Server 2022 data center. Next, we'll select run with Azure spot discount. Next, let's set the eviction type. Azure will evict spot VMs to make room for standard VMs. That's why they're cheap. We can evict based on capacity. With this option, we'll pay the spot VM rate that could go as high as a standard VM rate for the same VM family and size. Or we can evict based on price and capacity. Maybe we don't want to pay the standard VM rate for a spot instance. Let's go to the Azure VM pricing page to view the cost of spot VMs. As always, a link to this page is in the description below. Let's scroll down to the filters. We'll leave it as a Windows OS. We'll narrow the results just to general purpose VMs and set the series to DSV5. We'll use that series for this example. Any other series will work the same way. Set it to the region we're deploying to, Central US for this example. We'll leave the currency and change the price to hourly. That's what the new VM page uses. We'll leave pricing model in comparison as is and make sure hybrid benefit pricing is disabled. Scroll down to see the prices. For a D4SV5, the pay-as-you-go price is just over 40 cents an hour. The spot VM is just under 8 cents an hour, a significant savings. Let's go back to the portal. Set the eviction type to price or capacity and the VM size to the same size we're viewing on the pricing page, D4SV5 for this example. We have to enter the maximum amount we're willing to pay for the VM. It was just under eight cents in the pricing page. What if we put five cents? It won't deploy. If we try, we'll see a message like the one on the screen. We can't deploy or start a VM when the price option is less than the current price. It has to be equal to or above the current spot instance price. So what price are we gonna use? Let's go back to the pricing page. Notice on this page, the pay-as-you-go price is just over 40 cents and the spot price is showing an 80% savings at just under eight cents. But if we go back to the Azure portal, it shows 0 0.07779. The pricing page is rounding up. Also, one other thing to notice, if we go to the bottom of this page and enable hybrid benefits, now it shows a number just over four cents. That's the hardware only price. Windows Server and Azure includes the price of the hardware and the OS licensing cost. Some Microsoft licensing agreements allow you to use hybrid virtualization benefits from on-premises licensing and Azure. That removes the Windows license cost. We get the hardware only cost, which is the same as a Linux VM. There's no OS fee for a Linux VM. If we go back to the pricing page, we're looking at the price for the hardware and the OS. We can see just the hardware cost by selecting Show Azure Hybrid Benefit Pricing. Now it shows the hardware cost of 0 0.0421 an hour for spot and 0.217 for pay as you go. If you see a discrepancy between the price on the pricing page and in the portal, be sure that hybrid benefits is either disabled or enabled on both pages. We'll disable hybrid benefits on the pricing page and go back to the portal and disable it here as well. This example doesn't use hybrid benefits, so we'll leave that unchecked. Let's go back up for this example and set the maximum price to 10 cents. There's also the option to view pricing history and compare nearby regions. Let's select that. This example shows the central US, north central US, and Canada central region over the past three months for the D4S V5 VM. North central is cheaper. We could save money by using that region instead. This gives us an idea of the historical pricing and if we're likely to get evicted by a pricing going over the 10 cents. Based on this information, that's not likely. Let's close that. And before we move on, let's set the eviction policy. The eviction policy defines how the VM will be evicted if Azure needs to remove it to make capacity for our standard VMs. The options are stop and deallocate or delete. Stop and deallocate will shut down the VM and will stop paying for the hardware. We still pay for the storage cost and it still consumes the spot VM quotas. So that would be four spot VCPUs for this region. Delete will delete the VM and the storage account. 
That also frees up the quotas. We'll have to create a new VM if we need to bring it back online. This would be a good option if we're using spot instances and ephemeral disks. Check out a previous video I did on using ephemeral disks. We'll leave it to stop and deallocate. The rest is the same as creating any other VM. Fill out the rest of the options for your environment and meet me at the Review and Create page. Here we are at Review and Create. Once validation passes, we'll click Create. This will take a minute to deploy. We'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, let's go to the resource. In the overview page, it shows spot VM set to pricing capacity with the eviction policy of deallocate. Let's deallocate the VM and go to configuration under settings. Once deallocated, we can change the eviction type and the max price per hour. That is how to manage spot VM quotas and deploy and manage spot VMs in Azure. I hope this cleared things up on using spot VMs in Azure. Like and subscribe if you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one.